All right, friends and neighbors, time now for another networking video. This time we're doing a wireless networking video. And today we're going to talk about 802.11 frames. Or, hey, this ain't Ethernet. Now, layer two protocols have a lot of things in common. They all have to figure out a couple of things. They got to figure out addresses to use. You know, who is this going to? Who is it coming from? Access method, whose turn it is to talk, for how long? In Ethernet, we had carrier sense multiple access with collision detection. We've got to do some error checking. We've got to put the frame together. And then we've got to have control fields of some kind to tell us what in the world is going on with a particular transmission. Now, up to this point, we're kind of used to Ethernet, right? We have a preamble of some kind. Our source and destination MAC addresses are the familiar six byte MAC addresses. And they're going to be, at least in the destination, unicast, broadcast, or multicast. The source will always be unicast. We've got a frame type or length as our control. And then we've got a data field size with a maximum of 1500 bytes. And then our CRC at the end for error checking. Now the wireless general frame format, all the way at the bottom here, we can see is a little bit different. Now we're going to go through all of this, but we've got some of the same elements. We've got control fields, we've got addresses to use, but then we've got a couple of other things that are not so familiar, and then we finally wind up with a frame check sequence or a CRC32 again. Now to get us started, here is what a general frame format looks like. And a lot of the wireless frames share these fields that we're going to see here. Now at this point, they look kind of strange to us, but we're going to go through all these. But generally, we've got a type and subtype, we've got a bunch of control field flags, and then we've got something called a duration, a bunch of addresses, and then sequence and fragmentation numbers. And then finally, the error checking. Now to start off our shared fields, we have the version, type, and subtype. Now we're talking about the first standard that came out. So in the early generation, all of the versions would be the same. They're all gonna be set to zero. Now following this, we have the type and subtype. Now previously, we're used to pretty much two flavors of ethernet, right? We had 802.3, and then we had ethernet type two, or the, the Dix type. Now the the real difference between those two was a little bit of a change in the preamble, but really the meaty thing in the middle that we really cared about was the type or the length. So Ethernet Type 2 had a type, and we saw 0800 for IPv4, 0806 for ARP, and then 802.3 had a length, and for that reason we had to have an additional 802.2 header that told us what in the world it was. Well, wireless has a lot more types. So to begin with, we have this general type. And there are three general types defined by the standard, 0, 0, 0, 001 and 10. And so that's management, control, and data. But each one of them has a whole bunch of subtypes. And in the example here, we've got a management frame that is an authentication subtype. Now this is a quick look at the table from the standard that describes all of the subtypes. And so on the left, we can see we've got the 00, 01, and 10 for the types, and then all of the different subtypes and their names. So each one of them has a whole bunch of subtypes. So when you're trying to understand all the different kinds of wireless frames that are out there, recognize that there are a bunch of them and that's one of the things that makes understanding what's going on in a wireless network a little more complex. Now, let's take a look at those control flags. So for our control field flags, we are going to start from the least significant, which means in the image, we're going to start from the bottom. Now, the way flags work is that if they're going to be set, then we change it to a 1. Remember that these are single bit values, and this constitutes the second octet in the control field byte. So the version, type, and subtype would have been the first octet, and this is the second octet. Now remember that access point. And one of the jobs that the access point has to do is manage the traffic within the cell, and that includes communication to and from the wired network. Well, these first two flags to or from the distribution system indicate which way a, a frame happens to be flowing. So if it's going to the distribution system or from the wireless to the wired, we're going to set the 2DS flag to 1. If it's coming from the distribution system, meaning the other way, it's coming from wired to wireless, 
Well, then we're going to set the from distribution system flag to a 1. All right. Anytime these two flags are set to 0 and 0, it just means the two wireless nodes are communicating. And that can be any kind of wireless node. Now, the more fragments is pretty straightforward. In the wireless world, we talk about MSDUs that are coming down or the data units that are coming down from the upper layers. And anytime we have to break up the data, we're going to provide an indication that a data chunk is part of a larger data chunk. So the more fragments uh, flag just indicates that this is part of a larger set of data that is part of what we call the data unit. The retry flag uh, is there for any number of the things that can go wrong in a wireless network. So if a data frame or a, a management frame have to be retransmitted, then the retry flag is set to 1. Now for the other four flags, the next one is power management. Now one of the other things that the access point has to keep track of is whether or not nodes go to sleep, whether or not they go into power management. So when a node finishes a transmission, it might indicate that it's going into power save mode. And then what it's going to do is set this flag to 1. The access point picks that up and all of a sudden realizes that it's got to start buffering uh, frames for that particular node. If the more data flag is set, when the AP is communicating, that means that the access point is buffering more frames for a particular node. Now we'll talk a lot more about the access method and how communication within a cell actually works later on, so this will make a lot more sense then. But suffice it to say right now that an access point stores data for any node that is sleeping. Now that doesn't mean they go to sleep for days, it just means they go to sleep for microseconds but or milliseconds, but during that time the access point has to store all of their data. If we have wired equivalent privacy turned on, WEP, then this flag will be set to 1. And at that point the header has to be expanded to include some additional information. I got more on that in a second. And the last flag is whether or not the data has to be ordered in a very particular way. If not, or if this is the, a singlet uh, sort of frame, then this will be set to zero. But if order is important, then we're going to set this field to one. So here's a little more detail on WEP. If you were going to encrypt a frame with the early generation wireless security, then what we did was we had a set of keys that we installed on the access point and on the node. We had to know which key we were using, so that's what the key index is all about. But in order to prevent using the keying material directly, an initialization vector was also used to modify the keying material or the cipher that was used for this particular frame. So both ends need to know the key index and the initialization vector. Now we'll talk more about WEP in another video, even though it's deprecated, it is our starting point. It's why we do things the way that we do today. Uh, so we'll make sure to hit that. But for right now, let's keep going with the 802.11 header. Okay, so the duration. The duration, well, it's complicated. From the standard, there is a definition of duration. And it seems pretty straightforward, right? Duration is the time in microseconds required to transmit the pending data or management frame plus one CTS frame, plus three SIFs, or short interframe space intervals. See, all of a sudden it got complicated there real quick, didn't it? But this value, this number, also carries the association ID, or the AID, of the transmitter. Okay, so there's a certain number of bits that are assigned for the duration. Part of them are the AID, part of them is the time for transmit. But this value is also used to update the network allocation vector. <laughs> okay. So here's the thing. Wireless timing is critical and also a little complicated. The point is that nodes exist in a network that is now shared. So that's the fun thing about moving to wireless. We have a shared media now. And also, we split our time between when the access point is talking and when everybody else is allowed to talk. And again, we're going to dedicate a whole video to how the access method and how the transmission times work in 802.11. But at this point, 
All that we need to know really is that each node needs a certain amount of time to transmit a particular frame and that each frame is separated in time and therefore transmission by something called the interframe space. There's a couple of different kinds of interframe space, but again, that'll be what we cover later on. Okay, so that's duration. On to the addresses. Yep, there's four of them that could be used at any, any particular time. Now there's actually more than four definitions, and in any particular frame, you're likely to see three or fewer addresses actually used. And so the type of frame that is being transmitted determines which kinds of addresses we're gonna stick in the frame. Uh, and it also makes a difference whether or not we're talking about the wireless medium or the wireless side and whether or not we're communicating with the wire. But in general, we've got these definitions. The one that's really important is the BSSID. Well, I guess they're all kind of important, aren't they? Uh, generally speaking, we've got a source and destination and you've got a BSSID. The BSSID is really the MAC address of the access point. And we need to know that so that we know which access point is actually handling this transmission. Now there are ways to handle ad hoc frames when you, or ad hoc networks where you don't have an access point. So that's mixed in here too. The source address, pretty straightforward, right? Who did this come from? The destination address, or DA, who is this going to? And this can be unicast, broadcast, or multicast. Now, when we want to talk about wireless transmissions and wireless only, we can start talking about things like the receiving address and the transmitter address, and sometimes these are used for access point to access point communication. But the real key here is that when we start looking at at least basic operations, we know that there's a collection of frames that we're going to use on a regular basis. And those have a very particular set of addresses that we're going to use, and a good example is the one shown here on this slide. So you're going to have a source and destination, whatever those are, whether they're wired or wireless, and then there's going to be a BSSID in there too that's really the access point. And yes, sometimes the access point can be the source. Makes sense in the case of a beacon, for example. All right, to finish up our control fields, we have the sequence number and fragmentation number or fragment number that go together. Now every single data unit, which we mentioned earlier, has a sequence number that's assigned to it. All of the fragments that might be part of the same data unit would have the same sequence number. However, where you are in that collection of fragments is indicated by the fragmentation number, which is the other four bits of this two-byte field. Now if you're the first fragment, or there are no extra fragments, right, you're the only one, meaning that all the data fits inside your frame, then that value will be zero. Now next up comes the data field, which we saw in the Ethernet frame, and we know that in an Ethernet frame, the value can be from 46 bytes to 1500. Well, in wireless, it can be a zero byte minimum, and up to a maximum of 2312 bytes. So remember, this is not Ethernet. Now that's variable and it depends a lot on whether or not you're using encryption or whether or not you've got additional fields going on in the header, but it's got a maximum of 2312 bytes. Lastly, we have the frame check sequence, which uses our old friend, the CRC32, and just for fun I put in there the high order polynomial that is part of that calculation. Well, you did it. You've taken a look at the internals of your first couple of wireless frames. And so in this particular video, we covered all of the fields that are part of the normal 802.11 wireless header. We also reminded ourselves what an Ethernet header looks like just so we can compare the two. Let's pat ourselves on the back. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Like and subscribe if I helped and may those wireless packets always reach their destinations. Although I guess right now we're really talking about frames. <laughs>